Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I have an update on the Imperial Sector project. Uh, this has been a large ongoing project. There are several videos that show some of its work in progress, construction, uh, whatnot. Uh, but for those who are on a, um, on a, what's the word I'm looking for, unfamiliar with the project. Uh, basically it's two Imperial Sectors uh, boxes put together with some scratch built and some extra pieces added on. At this stage I've done all the work on them uh, the, except for the final stage which is adding snow. Uh, so basically you'll get to see them now in their in pre-snow stage which I thought would be nice uh, before the snow covers up some stuff. I'm not entirely sure how much snow and where it's going to end up. You know, it's a natural weather phenomenon. Uh, so uh, I wanted to give you a chance to see it now before that happens. Um, so what I'm going to do is walk you through all the buildings and stop at a couple points along the way and show you some of the techniques that I've used. As I mentioned in the previous video, um, I used a lot of the uh, model mates, uh, particularly the rust, but some other colors on these buildings, some weathering powders as well, and I'll try and describe some of that so you can get a sense of how you could maybe emulate some of the effects that I've done here. So uh, let's take a closer look. There's a lot to look at, so hopefully you'll stick with it to the end, as I think um, they've come out pretty well. So here's a look at the first of the uh, buildings. This is the large uh, blue building. This is the largest front half of that with the attached stairway. And I realized just a second ago, I, this is like my third take trying to start this, that I want to show you a distance shot of these pieces so you can get an overall feel of them. But I also want to give you some close-ups of the individual details as I talk about them. And I'm finding it's really tough to do that with the tripod. And um, I'm also having trouble um, throwing enough light on these buildings <laughs> to, because uh, these look dark and I want all the details to show up. So I'm going to try handheld. Hopefully you can forgive me. I'm going to try to be really still as I pan. Um, but I think it's going to be the best option for these buildings because there's, there's a lot to look at on them. So just to give you a sense, um, taking a look at this one real quick, uh, basically as you can see I've gone in for a pretty heavy corroded look. Lots of rust, um, some uh, dust, and it, like I said, it varies on where it's ended up on the model. Some areas have it more heavily than others. Um, but, you know, some general, I wanted to try to go for something with some heavy old wear on it. This was bombed out a while ago. Maybe it's on a corrosive planet, and uh, damaged areas start reacting pretty quickly. Um, so this gives you a little close-up of the stairs, and I went in with the model mates, the um, oil brown, very light dilute airbrush at the back edge of each stair to try to shade that just a hair, just to give those stairs an accented shadow, make them look a little deeper. It's subtle, and it shows up differently in different um, kinds of um, lighting effects. But to give you a sense of how some of that looks, here you remember the barricade that I had that was already done before I began the building. You can see some of the rusting on that. Um, and this is all done pretty much with um, the model mates either by itself or over rusting powders, pigment powders, um, that were then coated again with the model mates. And um, really trying to achieve an effect that has a lot of color variation within it trying to give that real, you know, when you look at rust, it's got a lot of shades within it as different areas are, you know, freshly exposed and beginning to oxidize. Others have been there for a while. One of the other things that I noticed, and let's uh, do this, and maybe we'll turn and take a look at the back side here. One of the things I noticed is that where the weathering powders were, uh, they actually ended up looking quite bright. So on all the weathering powders, I went in and basically oversprayed them with the model mates and tried. What I really liked about it was that it retained the texture and some of the color, added a little bit more variation to it, but really in the end, um, you know, just was a great complement to each other rather than trying to, um, you know, have spots with one or one or spots with the other. They really work well together. Um, here on this um, uh, plank, you know, that you could sort of, you know, to patch that hole. You can see some of that texture here where there's some of the pigments underneath. And then, you know, depending on, um, some of these yellowing is actually from the washing and some of the model mates washed away and it leaves that yellow. Remember I told you that for the rusty effect in the previous video. Uh, but I, I covered some of that and some of it I kind of left and I just really liked a lot of that variation. Again, looking for the multiple colors to really add some realism to it. Here's another pair up here so you can get a sense of what that looks like. Panning back to look a little bit at the back of the building as a whole, 
Um, one of the things that I've tried to go for is um, if you notice along the bottoms of each of the walls, I've shaded that using the uh, Model Mates again, loving that transparency. So it doesn't cover it, it just shades it. Really like that effect. I didn't have to play with it. You know, that's just all airbrushed on. Um, and that I think came out really well. Um, put in the ladders. I just painted them in a bolt gun, added a little bit of rust to them, and tried to add ladders to each floor on all of the buildings. Um, I think there's one floor that isn't doesn't have a ladder in one of the buildings, but otherwise they should all be accessible. Um, and I put those in after the fact. One of the other things that I did, and you can see it in this window here, is I glued in some uh, you know plate steel quote unquote plate steel um, and I've put those in a couple of the buildings in various spots like somebody was trying to add a little extra defensive barricade and I left those um, a little bit fresher looking so they have let's turn this back around you can see it from the front so some of them have a little bit of uh, rust on them but it's it's subtle and it's you know meant to be like something that's been added relatively recently to fortify the uh, structure and here's the back half of that building and uh, taking a look at it, oh, well, that's interesting. Oh, that I think that was a ladder um, getting one of the legs popping loose, maybe. I tried to pinch the ladders in so that the, the wall would actually, the floor would actually hold pressure on it. But when I lifted it by it, it must have relieved a little bit of that pressure. Um, in any case, you can get a sense, um, again, of um, you know some, some weathering pigments in here. Um, but it just hit it with a bunch of spots. Um, tried to make it look random. Um, I always say random doesn't happen on accident. You've got to be conscious about that as you're kind of working on a large surface like this to break it up so it doesn't look like spots are evenly distributed. Give me a side of the, the side here. Again, a couple of those plates that have been, you know, welded in, so to speak, to just improve a little bit of uh, cover for some of these large windows, especially in this building because there's so many large open windows in it. and give you a sense of what the back of the building looks like. And there's the back of the building. An earlier commenter had, um, I thought, quite astutely pointed out that some of my original pigment uh, washing, I should say, that I had put in um, looked a little, um, well, shall we say, fecal in uh, or origin. Um, so what I did, and that, you know, after it's been, um, even with the weathering powder, as subtle as an effect it is, I mean, you can see it here a little bit stronger, although it's got a little bit of a granular texture. I think I know why that happened. Subsequent applications weren't so bad. Um, but you can see it, you know, it's filled in some of these cracks. So that shifted the color of these uh, spots a little bit. And then I went in as well with a little bit of um, some of the model mates and oversprayed some of them to also shift their color a little bit. And I think, you know, really, I... Well, we'll skip that phone. Don't worry about that. The missus will pick that up. I really like um, how this has come out. And I feel like this is the best, you know, sort of grungy dirty, worn buildings that I've, I've done to date. Um, the rubble pile that sits out behind it. And then I painted up a couple I-beams and threw those in like somebody was trying to shore up some of these hanging uh, floors to give it, uh, you know, it, not only to make it look like it was shored up, but to actually shore it up. So if somebody were to put pressure on this, this isn't gonna risk, you know, breaking any of the uh, glue joins in the back there. So that gives you a little sense of the first building. And here we have the second building. This is the building that has the large balcony out in the front of it. And uh, one thing I'd like to point out here is that what I did is I came around with the um, soot black and I basically blasted um, a little shade all along the bottom of all the buildings to try to tie this black surface into the building. And uh, when I put the weathering powders on it, it actually uh, took a lot of that away, which was okay because I think it was a little too strong to start with. Um, so I was kind of happy to see that and left it with a little bit of an uneven modeling, which I think uh, actually kind of works well. So, you know, even though I was sort of uh, cursing some of the effect um, that, you know, the weathering powders had stripped away, in some sense it did add to some areas. So, you know, it's uh, pros and cons on both sides of the fence. But I really wanted to take that color down. Whoops, I keep it in frame here. Take that color down to try to tie it into the earth and think about, you know, you know some of this, this earthen material coming up onto these surfaces and darkening them over time. And you give you a sort of a top-down shot, maybe a gamer's view of what this might look like. 
and a shot at the back of this building as well. You know, same effects, you know, trying to match it for all the rubble piles as well. Um, tie that in. Um, ladders. Smudge. Debris. And here's the back side of that building. Give you a sense of uh, how that uh, looks. Coming around the back of that. Um, so I did go in and, uh, you know, really try again. I guess I made rusting the real focus of this aside from, you know, taking in and darkening some of these corners to add a little depth and shadow to it. Uh, you know, but uh, to do all of these gradated, gradated, maybe that's right, actually, you know, colors on these rust patches takes a little bit more time than you think as I'd have to airbrush in some tight, tight spots and let it build up in a spot and then go out and come around. It's not just spray it and you get that modeled effect. You have to, you know, angle the concentration of the material in certain spots to build it up where you want it to be darker, where you want it to be lighter. I mean, you don't have to consciously do that, but I think it adds to the overall effect. And uh, here's the sandbag emplacement now painted. Um, and I did go in, you know, and, and darken, again, the bottom of the sandbags just a little bit. Everything got a little a little bit of a grounding. And I think that added um, overall to the piece and, uh, you know, gives it a little bit more three-dimensionality than um, some of my previous work. And here's the Manufactorum. And somebody had asked me uh, on the Model Mates video a question about the rusty red versus the rust effect. And on a dark building like this where the color is, is very, very deep, you will not get any color on this with the rusty red, for instance, especially because the building is a reddish, rusty color. Um, so here you have to use the rust effect to get it to show up um, because of its improved opacity. And uh, I'm not too happy about this lighting. I'm finding it pretty hard to get something that I like. So hopefully out of all of these shots, you'll get a, at least a general sense of how these effects have come through and uh, what, they've, what they've added to the texture and the colors. And here's a shot of the back of that building. And with the granny grading at the bottom... And uh, it's interesting to note, you know, with the different colors, having a lighter color in the interior uh, makes some of these effects pop a lot more than it would be on the front. It gives it kind of a nice contrast, but still ties it all together. And you can see some of that shading at the bottom of the walls to gritty that up, you know, and taking it up in the corners. Um, and a little more, you know, shoring up of the walls and whatnot. And here's the back half of that building. And this is the area where it will get the razor wire coming in. Um, I almost had it done today and I didn't quite have it ready and I just wanted to shoot this video. Um, but adding some some different, you know, the weathering powders, uh, overwash, the model mates, um, really help to, you know, grind me up these barrels and take away some of the, I think, some of the problems that the original Vallejo shade um, had produced on them. So overall, I'm, I'm a little bit more pleased with those uh, as how they've come out. And you get a sense of the back of that building. I really kind of think actually this fan um, came out kind of well and there's a little fortuitousness there as I think it was helped by the um, removing some of the pigment and then reapplying. It's just got lots of color, lots of, lots of streaking and uh, I think it just kind of says to me corrosion. I, I really was pleased how that came out. I mean, I know it's just one spot, but sometimes you have little favorite spots sense of how that granny grading and I just kind of dusted this um, with the airbrush real quick around some of the edges um, I didn't want to try to make the whole edge rusty or whatnot I think it would be a little overpowering and here's the power plant section and the power plant section I went a lot lighter on with the corrosion as I was figuring this has been brought in after the bombardment right it's not destroyed but even in the you know I, I always have to have some kind of thematic story in my mind you know in the corrosive environment of this planet you know it's already starting to show degradation um, but I particularly wanted to sort of go around the um, top and work on that a little bit but going on black it's um, hard to bring out some of that model make color and I originally was using a blend of the um, rusty red and the uh, rust effect 
and I think I needed to just go 100% rusty effect to bring it out. But saying that, it's you know the early stages of corrosion, so it doesn't look too bad. I did hit around the top here with the soot, and as I mentioned before, it's got a bluish sheen, but I think it works pretty well color-wise on the exhaust vent. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's uh, maybe modeler's choice on preference. Um, along the sides, I did um, shade the bottom of this building, and it got really mottled when I washed it. Um, and I decided to leave it as it is. Uh, and so it's got a, kind of a unique look compared to some of the other buildings. But um, overall, I still think it, it works well with it. Um, hit a few areas with the rust. And here's an interesting thing, and I'll show you the back in a second. Here I've used the mold uh, weathering uh, liquid there, for, uh, Model Mates liquid. And originally, it really didn't show that much. And I was like, well, maybe I'll keep going over it, darken it up. When I put the weathering powders on it, the weathering powders fell into those cracks and just popped them out, and it just looks like corrosion on brass. I can't believe how much that weathering powder, and if you look on the back of these, how much that just blew out that, that weathering and just made it so much more than what it was. You can see on the tanks some of the shading of the green that the mold produced. And I was planning on just continuously going over that. And after I saw this effect, I decided I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it um, as I really liked what it turned into. And that's just, you know, fortuitous accident, really. Um, but something to kind of consider in the future is that, um, you know, after, because most likely what happened is the pigment settled here and then re-liquefied uh, the mold and then absorbed that into the pigment and tinted itself. So it's just, I don't know. I don't even know if I could reproduce that, but hey, it, it came out here and I'll take it. And so that is the uh, power plant section. And here is the Battlescape terrain piece. Now this, I really didn't know how to play. Um, it comes with, um, you know, trees, it's got the craters, and it's got the uh, destroyed rhino. Now the rhino and the Macrage lander, which I'll show you in a second, the customer requested that I paint it in a Space Wolves uh, theme. So what I did, and it, you know, of course now there's so much on it, it might be hard to see, but what I did is I painted it in a, a Vallejo Shadow Gray, then I 50-50 blended it with um, their wolf gray, shadow gray, and uh, painted out towards the edges, and then hit all the edges with plain uh, wolf gray. And tried to give it a little bit of a modulation, but not in any particular angle, and not technically, I don't think, the way typical modulation works. So, you know, it's just me playing with the airbrush. But then, looking at this model, it is full of holes, and they're gaping holes, and they look corroded. They're irregular. They don't look like shell damage. So I decided to run with that and just rust the hell out of it, and I just threw it everywhere where there's a gaping hole. Um, pretty much, I just piled in pigments, piled in um, the model mates, and just really tried to make it look like it's been sitting here for a while. The only thing I, I feel like I don't like about it is it still looks relatively bright for such an older vehicle. So I may go back over it with a little, um, maybe the oil brown and, and dust it and take down all of the uh, paint colors a little bit uh, just to, to, to knock off some of that I'm fresh and new out of the shop paint color look. Because I feel like on this kind of an ashen world that it's probably, and I was hoping that the weathering powder would add a little more color. Can you believe it, the weathering powder, something I felt like the most confident about with this project has been the most difficult thing to, to implement. So, hmm, you know, always learning, always learning. Nobody's a master of everything. Going to have to keep working on it. I like this little sign in the back here. I picked that out in like a bronze color, painted up the skull white, and then uh, just rusted that. And I think that kind of came out pretty nice, actually. It's an interesting piece. It's got a lot of little details scattered around it that you have to pick out. Hmm, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a hard thing to figure out exactly what to do with it. But saying all of that... This is also, of course, going to get snowed over it, and the snow is going to knock down a lot of things and mute those and, and cover some details. So I think once it gets snow on it, it's going to look really stunning, but I do think I need to maybe take that down just a notch, especially looking at it um, today with a fresh eye. And here we have the McCrash Crashed Lander. 
Another questionable piece, hard to know exactly what to do with this. Should I say it's freshly crashed or should I say it's been here for a while? Um, some nicks in the in the, the hull seem to indicate, you know, it's it you know it's crumpled into the earth, but it doesn't have corrosion holes like the rhino does, so I started to go very light on it for weathering. And I ran a lot of um, black weathering powder over it, streaked it, um, tried to dirty it up a lot because it looked, you know, I'm figuring it, it's taken fire on its way in, right? Smoke bursts in the sky. I don't know what, you know, I'm trying to just work with it. And um, in the end, I decided that, well, if I'm pretending that this is a highly corrosive environment, you know, maybe the snow is like acid snow and everything starts rusting on it quickly that I just go in and I'd rust it up but I definitely went lighter and so you can see um, again that wonderful ability of the model mates you know what effect do you want and so what I did is I said well it's just starting so I left a lot of these spots quite a bit brighter than say on the Rhino um, you know like we're just starting to get that corrosion happening maybe this crashed a couple months ago um, hasn't been cleaned up I don't know Use your imagination, but um, anyway, that's the effect that I decided to go with. And then I watched a video. Um, I don't know, was it Magna Magna Cart August? I can't remember his name. Oh, YouTube names. But uh, man, he had painted up a, um, an, a flyer and had weathered it so well, and it made me just go, oh. Oh, my McCrash Lander looks terrible. So there's plenty of skill to work on in the future. But I think, again, once I throw some snow on this, it's going to really, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of depth beneath the snow. And I think it's going to look all right. But I wanted something a little less aged than the Rhino. Hopefully I've achieved that. And last, and perhaps least, are the five objective markers. The customer requested that I make some objective markers, and as I mentioned before in a previous video, um, I basically put together a few pieces using Pegasus Hobbies, and then um, used a couple of my pre-existing molds uh, from her starts to um, cast a couple of those pieces, a little supply depot, and um, you know, a little transformer or electrical generator. Um, with this, I decided to try to add, you know, a little bit of a glowing effect for the, maybe the power cylinders on the side. And I really like how that came out. Um, I was thinking about trying to add a little object source lighting on the sides of it. And, uh, and I realized that one of the problems with object source lighting is the paint is, a, is opaque. I mentioned that in my Model Mates video. So I'd like to get some yellow candy color um, for this kind of effect. Maybe get a couple other light, um, you know, bright colors. So I won't be doing that on this piece because um, I'm not going to place that order for some time. But it's something that I'm going to definitely look into in the future. Um, but hopefully... Um, you know, it looks nice enough on its own. Hit it with a little rust as well, tie it into the piece. The only thing I didn't really age is the um, supply depot, and I figured, hey, something had to be brought in today on the uh, latest flyer. And so I figured that's the one thing I'm just going to leave as it is. Painted it up, gave it a uh, quick wash with uh, Badab Black, slightly watered down, and uh, we'll go with it as it is there. Uh, but anyway, those are the um, five objective markers, and that completes our tour. So hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at these uh, buildings. It's been a crazy project and uh, has been the most one of the most involved projects I've done to date. Will probably only be surpassed by the castle um, that I will be returning to with a fever very very soon. Uh, so um, you know it's been it's been a challenge. You know some areas I feel like have come out really well. Some I feel really unsure of. I'm trying a lot of new techniques on it, and so I, I hope the impact the overall visual impact of the buildings really works in the eyes of my audience you know really you're the ultimate critics um, and the customer being the, the pinnacle of that so hopefully it, it meets with his approval um, and uh, it's been an interesting journey so far still have one more step to go a couple more steps actually I gotta do the razor wire do the snow um, and I didn't show you the um, connectors between the buildings um, with the metalwork and the walkway it you know it looks the same and at, at this point this video is already running crazy long so I had to drop it somewhere but when I do the um, snow what I'm going to do is put the buildings out um, probably on the floor or on a table and uh, lay them out so you can get a, a big expansive look at them all together and then do a couple close-ups so you can see some of that snow effect so that will be coming down the road hopefully pretty soon as I'd like to get these packed up um, and shipped out um, within the week or so so 
If you have any questions or comments, as I always say, <laughs> feel free to leave them down below. I try to answer them all, um, and uh, the volume is increasing a little bit, but it's still manageable, so I'll be able to do that for the immediate future. So I'm happy to answer questions and, uh, and hopefully inspire people to try some of these techniques on their own. Uh, Model Mates, awesome product. Really, really uh, need to put it into your palette. Uh, but um, be aware that you do need to seal it quite well if you're going to do layers over it, um, as, uh, as I found out the hard way. So uh, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And uh, keep your eye on the channel. Of course, I'll be back with another video uh, real soon.